So on this panel, we're going to actually talk about personal mobile assistance. Um, if, you, if you remember the landscape we looked at, we're going to be talking about those that are spe specifically help us control smart objects and um, typically reside in either our mobile phones or in our cars or the things we interact with on a, on a daily basis. Um, so can you guys just briefly introduce yourselves and your company, your role in the company? Okay. Um, my name is Wally Brill. Um, I come from a long time ago, the music industry, and I wanted to create an opera that was interactive. So I went out to learn about speech recognition and found myself working at Nuance. Um, I know there's some Nuance people here. Um, I have the original blue Nuance hat. Um, it was a great experience. I learned a lot and then set out to create a voice user interface consultancy, which I ran for about 10 years. And then something funny happened. I decided to turn from poacher to gamekeeper. And I went to work for eBay as the global head of self-service, which was a really interesting change of perspective from being a, a customer, uh, from being a vendor to being a customer. Um, so that was pretty fascinating. Um, I then went back to consulting, but I was blogging about how I really wanted a personal assistant that worked for me, that wasn't Facebook M, that wasn't um, Google Now, that wasn't Cortana, but that was mine. And some folks from Australia and New Zealand responded to my blog and said, well, we do this. This is what, what we do for a living. So we started talking, and it was my wave. So I found myself as their chief evangelist, which is the job I do now. I go around and talk about my wave. And uh, it's very exciting and it's lots of fun. Ilya. Yeah, um, so my name is Ilya Gelfenbein. and I am the CEO and co-founder of API.ai. And um, so uh, as you've seen probably in the uh, landscape that Amy shown, well, we are actually part of almost each, uh, like each, uh, well, part of it. So we uh, started as a uh, consumer assistant company. So we launched uh, our first assistant, which is called Assistant. So if you Google Assistant, you'll find us in the first place. Um, uh, about half a year before Siri. So currently we are the largest independent assistant in the market, having about 40, well, yeah, close to 40 million users. And uh, then we switched to a platform so that now we are offering this platform that allows to build our like call conversational agents uh, and chatbots um, for developers. And uh, technology-wise, we are covering all, well, almost all the parts, so starting from ASR, intent recognition, conversation management, and trying to do it in a self-service way. So we are not a company that builds custom projects for clients, but we are offering this platform for them. To, to build it and trying to make it really simple. So that platform, we have uh, about 35, I guess, thousand developers uh, using it. So starting from consumer electronics companies, automotive, uh, enterprise, ERP, and recently, obviously, chatbots as well. We are one of official Slack uh, partners for building bots for them. We've launched our, our integration with Facebook next day after Facebook announced bots. Um, yeah, so that's what we do. Okay, excellent. So Ilya, I wanted to ask you first, um, you know, you've got experience actually building a personal intelligent assistant with uh, your assistant. And the platform that you provide, developers use that if they're building a, a personal assistant. So what kind of trends are you seeing? I mean, what are, what are the developers asking you for in terms of things that they're trying to do for their customer? I mean, we're, how are things evolving in that space? Yeah, well, in many cases, well, developers and customers are the same. So like there, there could be like a speech team in a large consumer electronics company, let's say. Um, so what they are uh, asking about, um, so well, the main values that, that well, we provide and what they are looking for is first um, intent recognition and be, being able to describe these language models in really easy way. So you can like describe, well, provide several examples of user requests and then make system understand a huge variety of different ways of saying same things. And also supporting, well, a conversation. So like supporting clarifying requests and so on. So building this, um, well, dialogue capabilities 
for assistance. So this is what they are mostly looking for. Um, what we found recently, uh, well, which is probably not that surprising, but most of developers, they don't really want to get really deep into NLP and like integrations and everything. So making this process as well much painless as possible really helps. So like, well, so say for chatbots, um, like what we are trying to do is like they create this agent and they just like tap one button and it is deployed with say Slack. And this is really like well, what, what they well, uh, need. And also, by the way, like well, one of the like main values, and I guess this is this relates to your uh, statement about like well, like voice versus text and how it will work. So what we are doing is like we are trying uh, to provide a tool where they create uh, a, an agent or a bot once, and then it could be used with or without voice and well, with lots of different platforms. So you don't have to like well, customize it for each specific platform or like provider. Right, so are you seeing any um, any trends yet that people are wanting to create more voice user interface type in assistance versus text, or is that shifting? Uh, or well, these are I would say different clients. First of all, so clients that are building like well IoT devices or or uh, uh, or like well in-car applications or wearables, there are fewer uh, of them, but not because well there is less interest, but it just requires more resources. So whereas, well, you know, anyone could, could create a Facebook bot from scratch. So I would say, like, currently in terms of, like, daily registrations, we would see more developers trying to build chatbots, um, like text. But it is, well, mostly, well, part, partly, about, partly because it's easier, and partly because it is, well, there is a lot of hype around it. <laughs> So I guess, well, Wally, what are, are, what are you seeing as, as trends of in, in the whole mobile personal assistant space? Well, clearly, the, the chatbot is the trend. Um, I have worries about it. I have concerns about it. Um, just to speak to the dichotomy between speech and text, I think it's a, a little bit of a fool's errand to split them because we're entering a time when multimodal interfaces will be the best thing we can have because there's some information. Thank you, Wally. Thank you for saying that. Okay. Well, there's some information that's best delivered by voice. There's some information. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna ask my personal assistant for flight times to New York, I don't want a speech interface to read me the flight times. I want it to be presented on a screen so I can select the one we want, whatever. Um, so I think there's horses for courses. I think it's, it depends on what the information is that you want to uh, elicit. Um, in terms of trends, so, you know, I know you were going to talk about privacy later, but I think, I think a desire for privacy is a trend. And I think that there's a lot of concern around, and I, you know, I don't have to name them, everybody knows, the, the, the big guys. Um, with their intelligent assistants and their, their M and things like that, that are sucking data. And they're, they're sucking up a lot of data and they're using it for marketing, which is what you'd expect. And I think there's a little bit of a, I wouldn't say revolution, but I think there's, there's noise coming about it. People are getting concerned, people are getting a little bit disgruntled. There's a lot of ad blocking going on now um, there's, there's a lot of discontent around how much data has been taken. So the perspective that we have is really that people should have agency over their own data. They should own it. They should basically control it. It doesn't mean that the bank or the NHS isn't going to have data about you, but what it means is that you'll know everything that they have and you'll give permissions for that data to be used for certain things and not used for other things. So. I think that's a little bit of a trend that's starting and is, is going to kick off quite seriously with the data protection laws that are going into effect now in the, U, uh, the EU and the UK. Okay. And, so. I mean, when, you, when you see what, you know, what Microsoft has planned for, for Cortana, it, it, it seems like they want to make the intelligent assistant pervasive across all possible things that the user would touch because the, 
the value that the, the value proposition for the intelligent assistant is that it, it understands you and understands your preferences and and based on that um, it can truly be effective but then it's almost like you need to have the same assistant like Cortana on your phone or you know on, in an app on your phone and then on your on your desktop and in your enterprise application or in your S Skype or whatever so does that does that kind of support what you're saying? I mean, there's a, there's a need for this data, but then how do you still manage it? If well, so imagine, you know, this is the, the analogy we always use. If, imagine you had a personal assistant who worked for you 24 seven, and that assistant was there to do your bidding. You would inform that assistant from time to time with your preferences, with your information, with whatever it is, but it would stay in your personal cloud. That assistant, though, would become a universal interface, much as you're talking about in terms of Cortana, and would be um, available and responsive across all devices, but would basically be yours, and your data would be yours. You know what your data is. There's no reason why Microsoft or anybody else has to own it. You know what it is. You can, you can get agency and use out of it. So I think yeah, there should be a universal interface. I think we call it Frank. Um, just to throw the ad in there. But um, why should people have to learn any other interfaces? Now, chatbots are interesting because of text. But the fact is that we're going to have a tsunami of chatbots. And, you know, it's going to be like apps all over again. Why should I be dealing with, with slightly different chatbots here, there, and, and everywhere? Why doesn't my personal assistant that knows me go out and deal with them through APIs? Right, but let's say, so I'm a, I'm a company that has, you know, some kind of travel database with a lot of different travel capabilities, and I come to Uli and I say, hey, I need to, I want to use your platform because I don't have any way to voice and text enable uh, an assistant capability. So you can do that, right? I mean, they can use your platform, but then how does that, I don't understand how it would still tap into some API that controls the, the user's data. Well, there is, um, yeah, I, I totally agree. There is like a huge, uh, well, there is a need to figure out how to work with user data. And the main reason is that um, like as Wally said, um, you know, well, there is no sense in having bots like a, an Uber bot and Expedia bot and other uh, bots and launch them separately. So like one, if you need a cab, another, if you need to book a hotel and so on. So in this case, these are just separate apps. Um, so there is a, this huge need of orchestration so that, well, there is like one uh, well, either assistant or, well, you can think of it as a, like a browser, like, you know, browser and websites. So websites are separate bots and browser just helps to access them. Uh, what is special about bots is that, um, you know, having this information about the user is really necessary for two things. So one was mentioned, like, well, in order to, well, better perform your request, you need to know, like, user preferences, like, well, what, what, what kind of services user prefers and so on. Second is, uh, well, you don't, you do really need to share context of a conversation between bots. So let's say I'm, um, I'm like booking a flight and well, like Expedia helps me and then I, uh, I ask, uh, you know, like what's the uh, arrival airport? And it gives it uh, answers to me and then I say, okay, uh, uh, get me an Uber there. So in order to like, understand this request, we need to share the context of the conversation so that it understands like, what I'm talking about now, like what location at least, and so on. So, uh, so basically, there is this huge need to figure out how to like, share this data between services. And well, you'll kinda, like, you'll, you will have to do it. Um, I, uh, again, like, well, as, as many like, well, studies shown, well, you know, users always choose convenience over privacy, which is sometimes bad. But like, if you think, you know, what, how much information Google has about you? Well, a lot, <laughs> right? So and there are some tools to really configure like, what it has access to. So you can actually go to settings. And somewhere deep in settings, you'll find all of the services, all of the, by the way, providers that uses Google authorization, uh, and so on, right? But how many of you are using? Well, you're, so you're like, kind of talking about discovery services, too, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, because I, th I think 
that's a different topic, but it sort well, of ties into the privacy topic. I mean, if, if I'm, if I, if, if I use a travel assistant, mm -hmm. and is that travel assistant going to be able to, to discover assistants that, like the Uber assistant or whatever? Mm -hmm. And then maybe if there's an Uber competitor, how am I going to discover that competitor if, uh, you know, if, if that competitor maybe hasn't paid to show up high in the list uh -huh. of things to be discovered. So you almost have like a product placement um, service going on there just to get your service in the list. And then that's, that kind of is a privacy thing too. Not really privacy, but it's more, it limits my choices because maybe you're not presenting to me the competitor if they're not in the list. Well, that's the same as Google. Uh, so when you search in Google, you know, it uses all this information in order to rank the services yeah. as well. So, yeah, I mean, th that's that's really great topic. So, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, that's next chapter in like in, in e-commerce where, you know, you ask an assistant to book a hotel and there are a number of like, well, service providers like Expedia, Booking.com, Hotels.com that would compete for this request, right? And they may right. pay for it or you could use some machine learning techniques in order to figure like, well, what is the best service for you um, and so on. But yeah, that, that's something very important. But what you're talking about is what Doc Searles calls intent casting. And intent casting for me is really the future. And that would mean that my personal assistant who knows my preferences when I say I need that flight from here to, to New York, or I say I'm going on a business trip to New York, the, my assistant reaches out, knows I, I fly United most of the time, goes out to whatever, whatever channel that he can get that ticket or she can get that ticket at the best price, get me the seat that I want, get me the time that I want, and also book my hotel. I don't care, frankly, whether they go through Expedia or whether they go through Skyscanner. Mm -hmm. What I care about is that I want the flight that I want, and I want the comfort and convenience, and my assistant can do that. Right. And in, that, in that case, they know that, you, that you're a, a, a loyalty member of United, and you mm -hmm. have points and all that, so they're going to want to get you those points for you, right? Mm -hmm. In, in another case where it's maybe, you know, some, some peripheral service that you don't use all the time, um, mm -hmm. it might be harder for you to know how that service is being recommended to you. But so right? I, I'm not even looking at recommendation. I'm, I'm looking at um, trusting over time <laughs> that my agent will deal with this. Like if I ask um, for an Uber, the system, my system should know where I am and be able to give, you know, book from this point and simply ask me what my destination is. And I can give the destination and it goes off and books the Uber. I, don't, I shouldn't have to do any more than that. Right. But I still think you might be giving up a certain amount of control if you let it select everything for you. I mean, it's just... Well, it'll, it'll bring back options if there are options that are radically different, sure. Yeah. yeah. And like, well, in, in the like browser analogy, I wouldn't really, I don't really believe that there will be like one browser that controls all the agents or bots. There will, there will be several. And for that, so uh, like same as websites and browsers. So I guess what we will need is like, well, to provide like tools for well, creating these agents and bots. And then also some standards on how to work with data. So that, and, and then, well, we will have well, several, well, these gateways or uh, like browsers that will survive. So like one can be Frank, another one can be like Alexa, you know, and uh, yeah, obviously there will be some kind of war there, but I just don't think there will be just one survivor. So users may need to, uh, may want to have this flexibility of choosing like what kind of assistant or gateway, like universal assistant to use from one hand, from another hand, developers don't really want to, you know, like Expedia wouldn't want to build agents for each of these browsers. There should be some like way how to standardize it so they describe it once and it works with, with all of those. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so I don't want to hog the conversation here. Just if anybody's got questions. Oh, you got one back there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi there, I have a question for, for Wally. I'm just uh, interested to understand how uh, MyWeb monetizes all these transactions. 
Uh, how, do you you, how do you monetize? How do you make money? Transactions. Well, it it totally depends on who we're working with. So, we start with enterprise because we have to we have to build up that number of customers um, that are going to use the service. There's there's two two facets to it. There's the enterprise side, Frank. And there's the universal Frank that's just downloaded off the, off, uh, the Apple Store or, or, or Google Play. And that universal Frank talks to the enterprise Franks. So we initially work with enterprise as, as our, our, as our uh, revenue source. And the system is free to the consumer. It basically comes down to you would then provide results on where you have a commercial relationship at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. So, speaking of that, you know, you said that people can, they, they engage with Frank by using an app. What, what, do you, what do you guys think about the whole discussion on the end of apps? You know, that the apps are going away because we're going to have this more seamless way of interfacing with, with our intelligent assistant companions. If I, have the, if I have the universal assistant, I don't need the Uber app anymore because it'll talk directly to the Uber API. So you're thinking people will have their, their one kind of trusted hmm. assistant? I think they'll have their, their, you know, I go on the web, I go to Google. I use Google as my search engine. I probably shouldn't, but I do. And I think people will have their favorite, most trusted personal assistant. And it may be frank for some people, it may be Cortana for other people. It'll be, you know, whatever people choose. What do you think, Ilya? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously there should be an, an, a, a, a universal assistant, and it is an app, but it is not about, like, well, apps disappearing. So that's a different type of app. It's just some, like, gateway to all of these assistants. Right. So in... in in your vision of the world, while I guess the people would, everyone would use Frank, but and Frank would also, you, you have kind of a, I'm not sure, sure exactly what to call it, but you have an ecosystem where the 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 user has a place where they store their data, mm -hmm. and so that they control their data. So you would basically, um, I mean, my wave would would be the ecosystem for all user data in a way, right? Well, the ecosystem is grown by the enterprise. So say you have a bank that wants to be the hub of an ecosystem, then they work with a mortgage lender, they work with a moving company, they work with, you know, in terms of real estate, they have some real estate vendors who they might work with, they might work with, with any of the big aggregators. Right. Um, and they become a hub of an ecosystem, and that ecosystem provides the goods and services, and it's monetized by micropayments between them um, when those goods and services are supplied to that, that hub vendor. Okay, because I didn't completely understand exactly what Geraldine was talking about. I mean, I, I, I kind of understood it, but when she said at the beginning, like, you, if you think of Amazon Alexa and everybody's talking to Alexa, and she said, hey, if you're a brand, you need to be careful because you, your brand might be disintermediated by mm -hmm. Amazon and Alexa, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that in order for, let's just say I'm a bank, right? right? So if I'm a bank, in order to prevent myself from being disintermediated, mm -hmm. I need to set up my own hub, and my I can set up my hub because I, I have access to all this customer data, but then what's the next step now? Well, no, so, so Frank, your universal Frank, right. will pull in Harry, who is the, uh, the personal assistant, which is a Frank, that's associated with this bank, for right. example. And that, that personal assistant version will be branded by the bank. It will look like the bank, it will play like the bank. And in those cases, <clears throat> which aren't the, the get me an Uber or get me a blah, 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 if in those cases where there's um, an enterprise that's, that's involved and needs to be involved, um, it would, Frank would pull in that um, assistant from that branded enterprise and that would appear, and, but the functionality would be the same as a Frank. Okay. 
So you're saying that that is going to compete against Alexa because like if, I, if we don't do that at all, then Alexa has convenience. It's kind of the whole Amazon thing to me is like the convenience factor, right? I can talk to Alexa and, and she can do all my banking for me because she's now connected to you know Capital One or whatever and she can do all that banking. So I might just switch everything to Capital One because it's so easy for me to reorder my detergent from Amazon. Now I can just order, you know, do my banking. But if, if I am a bank and I set up my own, but I still have to have my own voice assistant that I talk to as regularly as I talk to Alexa though, right? Your own voice assistant. Well, I mean, the whole point of, the thing is, Geraldine is saying, watch out or you're gonna get disintermediated yeah. by Alexa. The only way for me to not get disintermediated by Alexa is if I have something that people like to talk to as much as they like to talk to Alexa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But That's so, not easy to do though, right? No, it's not. And I think that the, uh, I think this is the problem of Alexa. I mean, I like Alexa. I think Alexa is great. I think as a technology, it's terrific. I take my hat off to people like Ahmed Bouzid, who worked on it so diligently. Um, I do think it disintermediates brands. I don't think a brand stands a chance with, with Alexa in the long run because there will be no contact with the brand. Right. So I'm just saying that what, you know, what, what Geraldine is telling us to do is to create a competing technology that has at least some of the same compelling capabilities, but you still have to get rid of Alexa somehow, right? I mean, you have to keep me from wanting to only talk to Alexa. That's, I'm not sure how to do that. Yeah, I, as far as Alexa's concerned, I'm not sure how to do it either. I mean, with us, it's, it's different because you are going to communicate with the brand through Frank. You're going to, the brand will come to you. If I ever leave the house and not talk to Alexa, right? Right, well, you know, and there's, there's no reason in the, in the long run why Frank can't talk to Alexa as well. Yeah. You know. Okay. But I guess one of the like, main challenges there is that if you are trying to build this competitor of Alexa, which doesn't uh, well, work with users' data and just leaves it for like, these service providers like banks and so on, well, main problem is that, well, context is not shared. So, like, you are now in this banking app, right? And then you see, like, a huge, uh, like, payment. And you may probably, and it's like Uber, and you ask something like, okay, what this means? Like, where did I go? You know, and it has to, like, share somehow the data and then, well, call this, like, Uber API and so on. So Alexa can do it. Because, because, well, you kind of give it all the rights to work with all the services, right? But in your paradigm, I guess that could be a problem, and well, not just yours, but any like, paradigm which would separate all these agents, mm -hmm. because, well, you cannot really share it. I mean, you can obviously ask user to just, well, accept, you know, like that you have rights to do it, mm -hmm. but if you do it, well, it is same as Alexa now. So you have access to everything now, and well, so the only difference is that, well, it's n now like not by default, but user will have to check all these buttons, but uh, like checkbox to connect all the services, but they will do it because of convenience. But that means that I have control, that I have control over my data. For, look, take the example of banking. So we've been working with a mega bank in the States, and what they want to do with Frank is have Frank be proactive about helping you with your finances. So you give permission, and well, the bank has the information anyway. It knows when your paycheck is deposited. It knows what your, what your situation is. If you go to Mint, you can find out how your budget's doing and track it on a daily basis. These pieces come together, and Frank can come back to you and say, well, if you buy that stereo wall, you're going to go over your budget this month. Do you really want to do that? Um, or, you know, do you want to wait a few weeks and, and, and track your budget, or do you, want to, do you just want to go mad? Mm -hmm. And so this information is there. The bank has it already. I'm not, I'm not giving it to them again. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just being pulled into, into, into Frank. Yeah, but, like, in this case, Frank is, well, like, is a bank assistant, not a universal assistant. 
He's a bank assistant, but basically the, the exact same functionality and interface as the universal Frank. Uh, okay. You see what I'm saying? But yeah, I think what Ilya is saying is that it, oh, that would only become really effective is if you were carrying it around with you in your life and as you were engaging with other platforms and things, like you were getting ready to order an Uber, you were getting ready to you know, go use your travel assistant. So you're talking to your travel assistant, but your travel assistant should really be talking to your banking assistant so that they can tell you whether or not you have the money for the vacation. And that's an integration issue, right? Yeah. My, my, my banking assistant has the same data that I have because I have the federated data from the bank. So my travel assistant can see that, that I have this financial situation in the bank and I can or cannot buy that ticket. They're connected, they're, they're inside Frank. Okay. They're inside my personal cloud. All right. We're running out a little long here, so I definitely want to, it's a great conversation. I really want to, you know, dig into the life and death of, of Alexa and how, how we're going to actually uh, overtake or disintermediate, disintermediate <laughs> Alexa. That's getting even harder to do. Um, but I want to thank the panel and then just to kind of move on. So thank you everyone for that.